Hi, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Bites. And let's go straight to Seven News in Melbourne. Thank you. A major train project in the northeast has been derailed. <laughs> yes, it's a thirsty business, especially when we're all being forced to take the plunge. Southeast Queensland has plunged into a snap three-day lockdown. Sydney will be plunged once again into lockdown. Darwin plunged into a two-day lockdown. This is really plunged Perth and the Peel region back into the COVID pandemic. Yes, it's 2020 all over again. And we're back to wall-to-wall -wall press conferences. Some more exciting than others. You were, sir. Did you, don't come near me. And who was that unmasked man? I am the prime creator of this earth. Yes, sir. I am the prime creator But ABC viewers didn't see that juicy bit. I am the. <laughs> OK, we'll leave that there for the Censorship! Meanwhile, this New South Wales cafe owner was arrested for serving customers without a mask. But when camera crews turned up, she was not so free and easy. I don't consent! We're in a public place. Please don't touch the camera. I don't consent! We're in a public place. Excuse me. We're in a public place. And in Brisbane, this beauty salon owner says masks are not required for staff and customers, telling Nine News she knows better. I'm Queensland, actually reading law. Queensland Health. Right. I don't care about Queensland I'm Health. This is the law. And our new Deputy PM, he knows the law too. Happily telling Alan Jones. Fill the car up with fuel. Went in 30 seconds later, 200 bucks. It cost me because I didn't wear one of these. But that's life. <laughs> Good on you, Barnaby. But it wasn't Barnaby's bust that put Australia up in lights. It was this. Two nude sunbathers have cop $1,000 fines for breaching Sydney's lockdown order. The men needed rescuing after they were startled by a deer while sunbaking on a beach. Yes, sunbathing is an exercise. No wonder the story went worldwide. But deals aside, as CNN reported, borders shut and hardly anyone vaccinated, how long can Australia go on like this? Good question. And with 12 million locals locked up in Fortress Australia, it's good to see the media pushing for a way out. With stories in News Corp and the nine newspapers for once encouraging under 40s to get the vaccine. Prompted by the PM breaking ranks with the medical advice and declaring... If they wish to go and speak to their, jo their, their doctor and have access to the AstraZeneca vaccine, they can do so. But that's just led to more confusion as the all-powerful state premiers and their health advisers slap him down. I don't want an 18-year-old in Queensland dying from a clotting um, illness who, if they got COVID, probably wouldn't die. Yikes! So, what did Nine's political editor Chris Gilman think of that? It was breathtaking, and the only winners out of today are the anti-vaxxers. Yep, as Carl said to the Federal Health Minister. It is a bit of a dog's breakfast, is it not? Good morning. Uh, no, with respect, the, uh, the medical advice hasn't changed. Really? Well, let me recap for you. AstraZeneca was all right for over 50s until that was changed to over 60s. And it was no good for under 50s until the PM said it was OK if you're under 40. What? A sevens Joel Dry told Ann Sanders. And you can't blame people for being confused. Yes, it's a mess. And it's being scrambled up in the media every day. As Melbourne GP Vyom Sharma told the ABC. Patients are hearing things from five different sources, politicians, CHOs, AMA, the college GPs, what their friend says, uh, and at a time where we actually need a really cohesive and comprehensive communication about AstraZeneca, we've got all these different voices saying slightly different things at the same time. Hey, what a brilliant strategy! Not. And we'll be back with me to watch 9.15 Monday night on the ABC, also iView social media. Don't miss it.